Like, you know, I, I pass rush in high school. So oh, yeah. I think I'm, a, you know, a, a natural born pass rusher. Pretty good, man. Nothing good that we wanted. What's the case study? the way this game kind of unfolded and these kind of close games help prepare you for playing against the top ranked team going to the pro next week? I mean, it's the SEC. Uh, we always going to get everybody that's going to be you know, um, going forward, uh, we'll be versus the team because it's going to keep up the current with a certain high, high level of, of, of uh, intensity and preparation, you know, so we can come out with better than we need. How difficult is it to be ready to play Wolf and inside backer? It's a lot, you know, but when you put your mind to it, you know, when, well, when I put my mind to it, I feel like I can do anything. Um, and, you know, that comes with coaches and you know, you know, those guys helping me understand the scheme and you know, just going out there for some my talent. What does it take to maintain third down success and how, how confident are you that you guys are going to be able to figure that out? Sorry? What does it take to maintain third down success and then how confident are you that you guys are going to be able to kind of figure that out as the season goes? I always feel disciplined. Uh, you know, everybody doing their job and executing everything. What are those conversations like on that long drive as they convert uh, five third, third downs in a row? What are those conversations like on the field? I mean, you know, we, we can control what we can control. So if there's something on our end, okay, cool. We're going to talk about it as, as, as players, as coaches, as a whole team. We'll get it right the next time and just keep fighting. Have you had any conversations with Kwame, being with Yonda, on how to to the defense, especially being those third down Definitely, uh, you know, like I said, just really executing uh, whatever call, because one might pass for us on third down, you know, getting off the field so our offense can execute and score. I got four turnovers today. Uh, that's an area where Kim Walmart's really been emphasizing. What was your perspective on getting the ball out? We need more. I mean, I think we could have taken way more shots at the ball. Me, myself, I could have taken way more shots at the ball. But that also just comes with, you know, just looking at film and preparing like a pro and, you know, just moving forward. There was some talk, I guess, heading into the, into the game about getting the calls in faster. Did you guys get the calls in faster? Were you comfortable with how you guys were getting the calls in on defense? Yep. Yeah, everything was pretty fine. Absolutely. What was your perspective of Damani on that last play? <laughs> uh, I wanted to take a knee, but you know, him just being a ball player, he is. Uh, you know, he had an eyes on the ball, caught a pick for us, and you know, just took a game away. Seems like he might be overlooked in the secondary. What do you think about that? It seems like he may be overlooked with the rest of his secondary members. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, Damani, he comes in every day, head down, and just work. You know, he's not the type of guy to do a rah rah talk or nothing like that. He, he communicates with the guys, he has fun with the guys, execute the call, and he's just a good ball. With this game coming down the wire, how big is it with DeBoer <coughs> being cool, calm, and collective compared to maybe the past? Um, I think, uh, you know, it shows his character, um, being poised. And, uh, you know, along with the whole team, like I said before in the interview, um, you know, his energy rubs off on the whole team, obviously, because he's the head coach. And, uh, you know, I think he's done a very great job with that. And, you know, we all appreciate Coach DeBoer for that. Were there elements of last week that kind of helped you prevail this week, you know, having gone through a – on, on the losing end, but then were you able to kind of like use elements of last week's game to kind of help you uh, in a tight game this week? Uh, somewhat, and some different offensive players that they had. Um, that they ran, uh, that they ran, but I think most of it was just us just playing Bama football, um, and just understanding that you know this is what we do. We got to go out there, execute the call, and play fast and physical. And what was the what was the message after they got the onside kick? Because that's a quick change. You got to get right back out there and make a stop. But you guys really seemed to attack them to close it out. But what was the message from the coaching staff when you got back on the field? I mean, just so what now, what you know, like right um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a very tough situation, a very quick turnaround. But uh, I mean, we got to get back on the field as a defense. We got to stop those guys. Tim Smith was pretty disruptive today. What did you see? See, see up there? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, that's Tim. You know, he's a. I just want to point out, you know, he's a very great leader for us. Um, you know, he always gives us message. You know, he, for, for, for everybody on the team, uh, you know, he can pull a guy to the side and talk to him. All the younger guys too. He's a great role model. You know, I even look up to Tim Smith. Sorry if you've already been asked this, but uh, on the last two-point try that they overthrew, what did you see on that play? On the last what? On the two-point try at the end that they missed, uh, what did you see on that? Uh, I mean, just a lot of people moving around the quarterback. He ran to the side and tried to find an open guy, but he couldn't get it. You know, Juan Darius, uh, he was over there to stop him. Thank you.